to the closed captioning in the chat. All right, thanks, Rob. Hi, everybody. Rob Pierkowski here, as you can see from the slide on the main screen. Um, <clears throat> I'm the Assistant Director of Online Teaching. I've been an instructional designer for uh, about 20 years now, and before that, a classroom uh, instructor. And um, for the past 16 years, uh, I taught um, online uh, elementary French. So um, just wanted to give you a little background. Uh, I'm not a rubric salesman, uh, per se. Uh, just, uh, you know, an enthusiast, let me say, uh, because I think uh, rubrics have a lot of potential uh, for helping uh, lots of students and lots of faculty. So uh, I've been reading the chat and I see that uh, many of you have experience with rubrics. Uh, I've asked Jamie to keep an eye on the chat while I'm presenting. Uh, it just sort of keeps my thoughts uh, on track. And uh, I encourage you, I, I'll encourage questions throughout the presentation um, and do my best to answer them. So um, without further ado, I'll sort of jump into my slideshow. And yeah, I need a t-shirt too. <laughs> Hey, Bob, says, I just want to mention before you move on, like we're seeing your reminders or notifications on your computer. Yeah, I know. They, just, they shoot across. I, okay. um, but thank you. I know. Yeah. My computer's only human. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to stop my video just in case I make any funny faces while I'm uh, presenting here. Um, so let's dig in. And usually, you know, a pretty logical first step is, um, you know, uh, just to define a rubric so that we all have a, 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 a similar understanding of what it is. Um, I, you can all read the slide, which is fine. Uh, and many of you use rubrics, so you already know. Uh, I like to, in terms of practice, I like to call a rubric um, preset narrative feedback for students. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a, a, probably a better definition here. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, a, a common experience for instructors is, uh, you know, uh, let's say in, in, in a face-to-face -face setting, is to uh, grade stacks of papers from their students. And, um, and a lot of times we find ourselves making the same comments over and over again, seeing the same issues. Uh, and, you know, it, it, uh, for instructors, it kind of makes us sort of step back and say, oh, OK, I just wrote, you know, um, you know, the same comment uh, on 10 of my 20 papers. Um, so what uh, rubrics enable us to do is to sort of expedite the process and uh, I think I think in the creation process of a rubric, it can be really informative for an instructor uh, in terms of digging into what matters uh, in an assignment, and uh, for, certainly for students, uh, it it helps them it helps clarify exactly what the instructor is looking for out of an assignment or a task uh, that they have to perform. So. Um, you know, uh, for instructors, uh, in addition, you know, to some of these bullets uh, or uh, to complement some of these bullets, um, the consistency piece is, uh, is can be real important for um, if you teach several sections. Um, uh, the consistency piece is, is great. Uh, in terms of consistent grading on the same exact criteria on every single assignment uh, for students, uh, of course, uh, you know, sort of communicates a, uh, <clears throat> the spirit of, of uh, equity across uh, all assignments. Uh, I, I'm sure as instructors, some of us have heard, well, that instructor doesn't like me, so I got a bad grade. Um, you know, not that we have to live in fear of, of, of that perception, but uh, rubrics sort of uh, really kind of solidify uh, the exact contrary, that, that um, students are graded on, on uh, assignments that have uh, a very clear 
object, uh, set of uh, objective criteria. And so, um, but when we think about program too, I don't know if we have any deans out there or, um, you know, department chairs. Uh, when we think about program, if our uh, rubrics are, uh, are consistent, uh, or even use the same criteria, maybe not the, maybe not the same exact uh, evidence for criteria, but the same criteria uh, across a whole program, then students become conditioned really uh, well to using certain uh, formats, providing certain types of citations, uh, using uh, specific examples. So uh, in terms of conditioning students inside of uh, uh, a particular discipline and uh, you know getting them to uh, emulate some professional behaviors if those are elicited uh, over and over again in their assignments and in the uh, evaluation criteria of their assignments uh, it can be really helpful for cohesion at the program level now I, uh, I you know just so you know uh, it's not my style to read, uh, you know, read uh, each of my slides to you. So um, I'm trying to, uh, you know, avoid that uh, sort of very, uh, you know, uh, rote type of presentation. Uh, so, um, you know, another thing for instructors uh, is, you know, that, that second bullet where it says save time. Uh, over the course of, of uh of a semester, let's say a 16 week semester, um, while rubrics might be a little bit of upfront design uh, and take up some of your time, they will save time in the long run when you consider uh, how many uh, papers uh, we need to uh, grade or how many assignments we need to evaluate uh, over the course of, of a semester. So it may take it may take a little bit of time up front, but it saves a lot of time while we're managing uh, student activity in our course. So um, yeah, so here's th this is for instructors uh, why to use rubrics, and again, there are many in the room that already use them. So um, in a few seconds, I'll you know uh, I'll ask for your input. Um, uh, on this as well, if 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 indeed uh, any of these bullets are true, do they help instructors uh, grade? And uh, from my experience, helping out with lots of faculty, uh, they do. So um, for students, uh, I think it's the clarity of uh, what, uh, if I'm a student, what I'm going to be graded on that uh, is probably most helpful. Uh, I can use, uh, if I get to see a rubric beforehand or I simply get conditioned to, uh, to a rubric being used throughout the, the course of a semester, um, I, I get very tuned into what an instructor is looking for and what a task, uh, you know, what a task um, requires me to, to actually do. So uh, if I understand the criteria under which I, I'll be evaluated, then um, I have uh, much more confidence moving forward with handing it, with submitting work that um, uh, that meets the criteria, the preset criteria. So yeah, and so let me ask uh, any questions up to this point or any perceptions. Uh, anything in the chat, Jamie? Nothing in the Q and A. Lots of discussion in the chat or people indicating that they appreciate rubrics, but no questions. Oh, okay. Uh, I do see something, uh, you know, uh, just the latest in the chat. Yeah. Assigning points to something like centering a heading. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, if, if you want things, uh, you know, sort of done in a particular way um, from your students, uh, it's so true, and and it might sound it might sound uh, somewhat uh, you know maybe kitschy assigning points to all these different things that you know perhaps students should know, um, but uh, it's helpful because uh, again uh, you know that example of centering a heading is something that uh, you know you, a student might not pay attention to. Um, 
reminds me of uh, in my high school when uh, uh, my teachers used to collect notebooks and all uh, notes needed to be um, dated on the day that I took them. Um, and little things like that were, uh, you know, amounted to a lot. <laughs> so um, it does bring up a, a, just one other thing. Uh, students are very tuned into, and I'm sure you all know this, but uh, how much things are worth and what's worth doing. So, um, you know, when, student, when students uh, start working on, uh, start working on your course, they open up the course and they see what's, what's coming up, what's due, what, what they're required to do. Uh, the, the, more, uh, the more clarity we can provide in terms of them, uh, uh, in terms of them working efficiently, the, the more appreciative they'll be of, uh, you know, their time being used wisely. So, okay, but I'll move on. So if you have never created a rubric, um, here's some, uh, you know, here's, here's one way to start. Create a rubric uh, for one assignment in a semester, and I'm gonna have some screenshots uh, in, in, in a few slides to uh, at least show you how it's done in Blackboard Learn. I'll try to make, make uh, my description of the process itself uh, a, a little, uh, little more conducive to uh, other learning management systems as well. So um, I will show you an example in Blackboard Learn, but um, you know, uh, rubrics I think are available in uh, lots of different learning management systems. I did just work with one uh, in in Google. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Moodle. Uh, sorry, the, a little slant rhyme there. Uh, and that did not have the rubric tool that Blackboard had, but I know Canvas does, and I know a few other uh, LMSs do as well. But um, so, uh, you know, so use one, if, if you're starting out for the, for the very first time using a rubric, use one rubric for, uh, you know, for one assignment and see how it goes. And if, if you like using that rubric, um, you know, and if it's general enough, if, if the same criteria is required on future assignments, uh, great, then uh, you, you're sort of off and running. Um, you can use a single rubric for a whole set of assignments. As an example, I used uh, uh, a single rubric for pronunciation. So in, in, my, uh, in my French language course, all of the pronunciation uh, was uh, evaluated on, uh, the, with the same criteria. So there are interesting. A couple questions in the q &A. Yeah, yeah. So Dorothy posts how to balance the trees for the forest. And um, I'm, I'm imagining she's talking about making sure that you're not digging too far into the weeds with your rubric. Right, right. So I'm, so I'm thinking, so what I'm uh, sort of inferring into, into, into that comment and question is, can they be too restri restrictive? Like, are you, you know, uh, do you, can you dig so far in that you don't allow for, you know, creativity on the part of the student? Or, uh, you know, just uh, sort of like a different take on, uh, on an assignment. Um, that's certainly possible in, in creating these parameters because we are applying parameters and, uh, and sort of, you know, guidelines uh, around uh, assignments. Um, does it dig too far into, into the weeds? I don't think so. I mean, to me, the exercise in clarifying what's important out of a, uh, an assignment um, is a great uh, instructional exercise for the instructor. So, I mean, I have, I have had, uh, in my teaching career, I've had assignments that I knew were great. They, they motivated students, they, they did a lot of things, but um, sometimes 
if I were to, if I were to, you know, sort of break it down, these were mostly K-12 uh, uh, activities that I had my students do. If I were to break it down, um, it would, it would take some time for me to, to actually nail down exactly what I'm looking for. So, um, in a rubric, we can, and, and I'll show you when we set it up, we can leave room for creativity, for, uh, uh, you know, for uh, an individual approach, uh, if you will, uh, that sort of steps outside the bounds of uh, the exact expectations we're looking for. So I'm hoping I'm answering the question. I, I, maybe I don't fully understand the question. I, I do understand the metaphors, uh, not seeing the forest through the trees. But uh, I'm not exactly sure how this applies to rubrics. Yeah, I think that was fine. Okay, uh, all right. You'd like to have Rob address that in a slightly different way. Please feel free to post that again in the Q&A. Sure. We have a question from Heather that says, I can see how rubrics would be used for discussions or projects. Could rubrics be applied to grading math problem assignments? If so, how? Right. So, so, so here again, the intellectual exercise and math is always a challenge uh, in, for, uh, uh, for, for myself as an instructional designer, giving advice on, on, on math uh, uh, assignments and, and math in general. It's, it's a challenge as many can probably surmise. Um, so as an instructional designer, I would help you. I would try to drill down to uh, break down the elements of, uh, you know, sort of uh, solving a math problem. Are there different elements of solving a math problem? So in my limited experience as a student with math, uh, showing my work was always important. And then, so we stop there. In showing our work, is there, are there elements that we're, we're looking for in a student showing his or her work? So um, that, you know, and so I would sort of break it down to um, <clears throat> how many attempts, how many attempts did a student make? It's that criteria that can be tough with a math problem. Obviously, uh, you know, at, at the end of the line, it, it, there, is a, there is a correct answer and there are loads of incorrect answers. Uh, but on my on my way to an incorrect answer, let's say, can I earn credit um, when uh, if there's a, a mistake, one mistake in a series of let let's say ten ca calculations? Um, so uh, so again, uh, that sort of intellectual exercise of breaking things down into their little pieces. Um, really, in, in, in something like a skill-based uh, discipline like math, sort of, uh, you know, uh, makes us aim at what are the, the skills in play and are those skills evident in uh, both the design of the task that uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm creating for students and in the evidence that, you know, students submit to me. So can those skills be broken down? So I'll use something like, uh, I'll use something like my, uh, my French course, because that's also a skill-based, uh, a skill-based discipline. When stu my pronunciation rubric is very simple and I I've never gone through this exercise of breaking it down, but it could be pretty interesting. So let me tell you what the simplistic rubric is. If, uh, if what uh, an utterance, okay, because that's what we call them in foreign language, if an utterance is comprehensible by uh, a foreign language, uh, by a native speaker, the student gets credit. Um, uh, if it is not comprehensible, the student does not get credit. And here's why. Because in French 101, that seems appropriate to the discipline. If it were 400 level French, I would uh, I would need to break down that that rubric, and uh, I I suppose talk about consonants and vowels and word choice and all these kinds of things. So, uh, what I would you know encourage you to do is 
again, dig deep and think about the rigor, the level of rigor for the students, uh, uh, for the target students, um, and the appropriateness of, uh, of your expectations in terms of what are you trying to get out of them? So in other words, in French 101, what I'm trying to get out of them is, uh, you know, their very first words spoken in French, comprehensible to a native speaker. So if they go to France and they want to order off of a menu, do they have a good shot of being understood? Great. Uh, next question, unless you want to move forward and address these in just a moment. Yeah, Charles. Uh, uh, so I, I'm just looking at the latest. Uh, yeah, I, I I hate the notion that math is easy too, because uh, I was very good at math, but uh, I certainly don't think it's easy to uh, to teach. And uh, and 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 I, I'm glad you're you're teaching me something here, Charles. That uh, you know, there's more to look at than the correct answer. Uh, when looking at student work and assessing math skills. So, um, thank you. So, Jamie, did you have others? Yep. Uh, okay. So I have a question from Catherine. Is there any reason to not share the grading rubric when you hand out the assignment? Yeah, you know, uh, no, uh, in short. Uh, I don't see why, um, but that is my teaching style. My, my teaching style is, is transparent and... Uh, and, and, and it's always sort of startled me that by default, at least in most of the Blackboard environments I've worked, with, worked in, the, uh, the show rubric to students feature is turned off by default. You can turn it on. And I encur always encourage faculty to do so uh, when I train them. Great. Um, there's a question from Miriam. What is the relationship between rubrics and learning objects, uh, learning objectives, sorry? Great question. Um, and I, I am gonna address that uh, a little later in the, uh, in the presentation. Uh, there should be, <laughs> there should be, and I, I don't like, I'm not really totally comfortable using that phrase, but uh, if, if you're, you're concerned with alignment between your course objectives, and a particular assignment, there should be uh, very similar language used in uh, your course objectives, in the instructions for the assignment, and then in the, in the rubric criteria. And I have a worksheet for that uh, just to sort of help us along with that type of process. But I think it's very important for students to see uh, a connection between the stated course objectives, not that they memorize them or anything, but that just that there is consistency throughout the course. So they know why they're doing an assignment because this assignment is so clearly connected to a stated course objective. Awesome. Uh, Hope just uh, shared an art history paper rubric. Thank you, Hope. And then uh, we have two questions from Rhea. I teach studio art. In designing a rubric, how to balance, sorry, uh, I had a pop-up cover the question. Um, how to balance a designing a rubric, very specific details slash requirements and overall relationships. And will you be talking about using points versus percentages? Um, the, the rubric is based on points, number one, at least in Blackboard. So uh, I'm just going to assume that, that you're in Blackboard, and that's not a good assumption for me to make, but uh, it's the rubric I'm most familiar with. Uh, it, it does work off of points. Um, actually, I'm sorry. It works off of percentages. It, so sorry. You can toggle between the bo both. Can you them. toggle between both? I'm so sorry. I, I'm, okay. I'm, I have an image in my head, that, so uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, you know, unfortunately, in higher ed, you know, and, and I appreciate your question, uh, you know, in the, again, another sort of creative discipline where um, 
you know, uh, we work in a coercive uh, environment to a certain extent. A lot of our students are in there because they want to get good grades. And so to that end, we, uh, we, we put some tasks in front of them where, you know, they'll get a good grade at the end. That's their goal. Uh, but, you know, in the interim, all those tasks are, are designed to help them learn. So, um, so, you know, assigning point values to each and every, everything, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. Uh, again, you know, I, I described my, uh, my speaking rubric, uh, my, my written assignment rubric with a little more detailed. Um, but with Studio Art, again, you know, that digging process, you know, uh, digging down and what do you want out of your students? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to go beyond that with my answer. Well, I think you've addressed everything from the Q and A. So if you okay, want. okay, all right. Um, so uh, again, just getting started. You know, uh, this is the process. Descriptors that qualify each level of performance. Uh, the, in in Blackboard, those are called levels of achievement, and uh, avoid subjective language, and. Um, so here's how we here's how we create rubrics in Blackboard, just in case no one's ever done it, uh, and you're looking at it. Um, <clears throat> and Keith, I, I did see your comment about attaching rubrics as documents in uh, Moodle, and that, that's how I that's how I helped out one campus, uh, Plattsburgh, uh, with uh, with uh, rubrics as well. But in, if you're in Blackboard Learn, it is under the course tools. You create rubrics, the, a little screen. I took a, I took a partial screenshot. Uh, create rubric comes up, and then this is sort of the form that you fill out. But it is indicative of of you know what a lot of rubrics should look look like. On the left here, we have the criteria, and uh, across we have the uh, the achievement levels. Now Blackboard, this is uh, you see these arrows. We can we can switch them around. My preference is to have the exemplary or proficient or whatever we you know characterize as the highest achievement level to the left and the lowest achievement level to the right. These arrows in Blackboard help us do that once uh, once we're inside a rubric. And then there's the criteria. So, uh, and I apologize. Um, yeah, see, rubric type percent or points. So, so there it is. Uh, thank you, Jamie. And uh, this is uh, the weight of each criteria within the rubric itself. Uh, so, <clears throat> for uh, as an example, formatting is worth 33% here. Organization is worth 34%. Grammar is worth 33%. Um, and then as we go across, uh, all of these, by the way, are uh, editable. So we can change all of these weights right here. We can also change the percentages uh, that students earn in this rubric for each criteria uh, by adjusting these fields right here, these numbers, 0, 50, and 100. That's, that can be a little harsh, right? Uh, because if someone's competent, it uh, looks like they don't pass. <laughs> so uh, I think these are, these are designed to be uh, modified right out of the gate. And um, so here's one that's filled out. Uh, it is filled out in, the, in that order. So uh, the criteria here was summarize problem question, analyzes uh, supporting data, uses other perspectives and positions. Um, and so, you know, as we go across, a lot of times what I uh, encourage faculty to do is start off with uh, the most exemplary uh, uh, evidence of, uh, of a particular piece of criteria and then sort of uh, uh, build down from there. So uh, here clearly identifies challenges, subsidiary, embedded implicit aspects of the issue, identifies in integral relationships, et cetera, et cetera. Here it's at 50% summarizes the issue, but some aspects are incorrect 
or confused, nuanced and key details are missing or glossed over. See, that's a, sort of like the lesser uh, version of this. And then does not attempt is 0%. Uh, so, you know, this is one example. I'm going to show you other examples as well. Okay, cool. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate the... Uh, Keith just put something about Moodle. So for you Moodle users, um, that's great. Thank you. Uh, so again, I'm showing you examples from Blackboard. Um, so once you have a rubric, the nice thing with Blackboard is uh, this is a discussion forum being graded by a rubric with a rubric. Um, so what, what happens is in Blackboard, the assignment loads up on the left-hand side. If there's a rubric at attached to that assignment, it, here there is a rubric attached to this discussion. What happens is I read the student work on the left. Okay, uh, in Blackboard, all of the uh, discussion forum uh, posts by uh, each student are organized for me to read by student. So uh, I don't have to travel around the threads. And then on the right-hand side, I, s I have my rubric uh, all uh, uh, that loads up automatically. And uh, this is uh, the point I was doing before about preset narrative feedback. When I get to these, I simply click on the uh, on each uh, each uh, achievement level that describes the, the student work uh, best, and I move on. And these points here are all sort of calculated uh, and, and um, accrued into a, into a grade for the student. So it's automatic. When, it, when I grade discussions, I launch my rubric. Uh, this one shows descriptions after like the third you know, third uh, grading, uh, I, I really don't need the descriptions because I'm just very familiar with the rubric. And so when I'm grading, it's click, 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 click. And then at the bottom, there is uh, space for more narrative feedback. So I can personalize the feedback for the students. Yeah, here's that space down here. So, uh, you know, just another view of, uh, of what this is. Uh, again, read the student work on the left and then click the correct, uh, the, the correct achievement level on the right. It creates a raw score and I can add feedback if I need to. So questions from you. I think some individuals were asking some pretty technical questions regarding Blackboard and, and Rubrics, so I was answering those. Uh, okay. Well. But if anybody uh, wants to, you know, elaborate on the questions that I responded to, please feel free to put those in the Q and A. Yeah, um, and I'll have uh, if I have any time at the end, I'll I'll jump into Blackboard and uh, you know just I'll go through the process in front of you if if, if that's helpful. Great. Okay. Cool. Um. So, you know, before the question is, you know, should, um, should rubrics align with uh, their course objectives? And so uh, I did a presentation a few years back. Uh, this was for instructional designers to help student, I'm sorry, help faculty um, align their design. And what that means is uh, make sure that, uh, at least ensure that learning objectives and or behavioral outcomes are embedded or consistent with the assessment instructions and then with the rubric criteria. So if you don't have a rubric and you th for a particular assignment and you think a rubric could, could ask, uh, could uh, benefit your students, uh, this is another way of going about it in terms of how, how deeply do you have to dig? Well, maybe a lot of the information you need in terms of creating, a, a, again, a salient rubric for, for a particular assignment is already in your course. Because if you're satisfied with the wording of your learning objective and then you're satisfied with the alignment of your assessment, meeting, a, meeting that, the, uh, that objective, 
um, then it's a great place to start in terms of uh, using the same language uh, for your rubric criteria. So uh, I told them to, uh, here are the directions, I told them what to do, um, here is the task, uh, I told them, uh, I, I, well, the objectives say why they're going to do it. The task says what they're going to do and what's expected of them to do. And the criteria should probably say the same exact thing, should align perfectly with it. Um, so, you know, just as an exercise, you know, I, I went into a, a course for observation and, you know, I just picked out these things and, and, and I copy pasted into this alignment worksheet. Um, this will be, uh, you know, this is uh, available to you too. At the end, I'll, uh, I'll have a link for you. And I know that this presentation itself, uh, I'll have a whole folder of, of different resources for you. Uh, and it'll be made available to you uh, through the CPD. So all of this will be available to you uh, to check out again if, if, if you think it's useful for you. Um, but so, you know, so what I did, uh, and, and I know it's hard to look at all this, uh, <clears throat> all this, you know, uh, here now on a single slide, but what I did was I, I, I copy pasted the learning objectives and outcomes on the left. And then I went into a, a particular assessment. And then again, this sort of introspective drilling down process of, okay, what exactly am, am, am I gonna have them do? And I just sort of grabbed, uh, grabbed words uh, from the two left columns, uh, learning objectives and the assessment instructions, and I dragged them over as sort of a brain, brainstorming uh, process for what the rubric criteria should be. And uh, it, it, I've used this a few times uh, with faculty and it works out pretty well in terms of, uh, you know, just getting to what's already in the course. So um, every time I've used this, it's been with an experienced faculty member uh, who already had, had, uh, had run his or her course. So uh, we know that these activities work um, so, uh, so this is what we did. We went to sort of like the source material, so we're not looking at a blank rubric trying to figure out what what the criteria should be, you know, uh, in the face of a, a blank page like that. So uh, this works pretty well in terms of uh, using what's already created. And again, what you as an instructor know when you know it works. Um, then um, you know it's certainly worth you know uh, doing if if you if you think a rubric will help you, and if, if you teach a class with really big numbers, um, you know with a lot of students or or several uh, several sections of the same course, uh, I promise you, as an instructor, a rubric will save you a lot of time. A lot of time. So, uh, you know, just a few, uh, you know, sort of ruminations about uh, using that assignment worksheet. Um, we look for alignment. Sometimes uh, uh, I, I did in my resource folder provide you with uh, Bloom's taxonomy of verbs. Uh, they're, they're basically verbs that, uh, you know, uh, aim right at critical thinking skills and higher order thinking skills. They're matched up with the different levels of, uh, thinking skills in Bloom's taxonomy. I think you'll like it. I'll show it to you in a second. Um, but, you know, uh, just in this process, I just want to share with you, you know, some of the things that, you know, have, uh, have come up. You know, uh, sometimes we have to reword, uh, revise the language in the course objectives. Sometimes that's possible, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I look at, we looked at directions and said, oh, you know what, maybe uh, I'm going to revise my directions. And, uh, you know, just to sort of tighten that cohesion with uh, the criteria uh, for, uh, for assessment. And, uh, you know, it's all about, you know, just continuous improvement, uh, you know, because things work great sometimes on their own without rubrics. Uh, but uh, again, um, you know, if you're interested in it, students have uh, a lot of uh, appreciation for, uh, adult learners, I should say, have a lot of appreciation for clarity 
and knowing what's expected of them. And, uh, and when you provide something like a rubric, uh, you know, I think what it does, you know, uh, without stating it uh, overtly is at least I, as an adult learner, if I looked over the criteria of a particular assessment, I would have a good idea of how much time this is going to take me. And that is, you know, probably the most, the biggest concern for adult learners is time management. So if, if they can zero in on uh, what's, be, what's to be expected of them, uh, it's very helpful to, for them in terms of re relieving their anxiety around how long something's going to take and uh, how much effort they're going to need to put in. Okay. Rob, we have a couple questions. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. From Jessica, how comment heavy are you when using rubrics? Do you still have a lot of feedback or does the rubric do most of that work for you? So the rubric, for me, the rubric does most of that work for me. Um, I, in, as an instructor, I teach a course that has so many assignments. Um, so that's just the nature of my discipline. As most of us can remember taking a foreign language. It, 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 it's, it's this long series of very short assignments to show evidence of learning a conjugation or set, vocabulary set or that kind of thing. So the nature of my discipline was they get, you know, uh, feedback from me constantly. So the, so the rubric uh, just, uh, I would just, uh, I, I would do very little narrative feedback, but if there was a problem, if something needed to be handed in, revised and handed, handed back in, uh, that would that would uh, prompt me to use some more narrative feedback. Okay, great. Um, and sorry, I'm trying to find a question here. Any additional suggestions regarding involving industry partners in creating or modifying rubrics? So, um, I'm not really sure about industry partners, but. I promise, I promise you, if you Google uh, rubric for math, let's say, and even get more, uh, more precise uh, rubric for li linear algebra, something like that, uh, you'll get a lot of hits. And uh, all of that, you, you know, I mean, unfortunately, in, in Blackboard, the, the rubrics are, are more or less proprietary in that. Uh, you can't just you can't just type it out in Word and bring it into Blackboard uh, in order to use the tool, the Blackboard tool, uh, rubric tool. So it's a copy paste function. Um, I will put these links in the uh, in the chat for you guys. Uh, so uh, and again, this will be made available after uh, after the presentation as well. We have another comment here. My issue with using rubrics has been one of quality. Sometimes following a rubric will give too high a score or too clearly, uh, to a clearly poor submission or too low a score to a clearly strong submission. Ah, so then the rubric needs to be uh, adjusted. Um, the, and this is, I guess this is part of that, that digging, digging in process. So if, if it gave to, if, if a rubric generates too high a score for poor caliber work, what, what I say to myself is that, oh my God, I, I, I was not explicit about a particular expectation or uh, I was not explicit about a particular piece of criteria. Um, Additionally, you can adjust those achievement levels within the rubrics and that yes. allows you to, to really make it so that you can be very specific. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, the difference between uh, a 90 and a 70. You could make it, you know, between 100 and a 95% or 95 and a 92. However um, detailed you want those levels of achievement to be, it can meet your, your grading needs a little bit better. I tend to wait. I tend to provide more levels of achievement at the higher end of the grading scale. And then once I get to like a C level, then the, the gaps between those can become a little bit larger, allows me to have a more precise grading rubric that way. Yeah, yeah, and I had a discussion rubric that I used for my class for a long time, I had cultural discussions, and <clears throat> I had a student that, that said, you know, some pretty nasty, uh, narrow-minded, bigoted sort of statements. I had nothing in my rubric that said, 
you couldn't say bigoted statements. <laughs> and so uh, there's a little bit of, you know, uh, back and forth with the student. Well, he met the, he, he did meet the uh, criteria for the rubric itself. It was that the rubric did not include that sort of substantive uh, piece. And uh, so I do appreciate that, that, yeah, rubrics, they do kind of box you in uh, if, if you want to go with the, uh, you know, sort of like letter of the law type thing. Um, but as Jamie said, they can be adjusted. I obviously needed to adjust mine. Uh, I added something, uh, a criteria called netiquette, uh, which did, uh, you know, uh, was worth 10% of the rubric and, and aimed directly at uh, appropriateness and sensitivity and empathy. Um, which I hadn't done before because I just figured everyone would, would uh, behave in a certain way. Uh, so I, I do appreciate, uh, you know, that thought. Uh, but to Jamie's point too, rubrics can be edited um, and uh, you can add, add and subtract to them, you know, uh, as you wish. So. Um, Additionally, if you have a, you can always adjust the score for a particular student for that rubric you can override the rubric score if you, if you want to. So you have a lot of options within Blackboard. Right. So I'm going to copy paste this for you guys okay. to the chat. And then when you're done with that, we have a couple more questions if you could. Okay, there we go. Yeah, please. So Kim asks, what do you think of using one row for getting the assignment in on time? naming the file correctly and saving the file in the correct format. Is five points too much to offer for just doing the assignment and getting the logistics correct? Excellent question. I see now, I think, that, I think that's a great idea because not only, not only does a student feel, you know, I guess a, a very slight sense of accomplishment that he or she has mastered the process, uh, but it, it's important. It, it's important that the submission be uh, sort of consistent for you, the instructor, uh, in that, you know, uh, I, I used to deal with a lot of audio files. Sometimes people and the instructions were to upload the audio file to a cloud space and send me a link. Inevitably, every single semester, uh, some students would, would insist on, on, uh, on emailing me the file itself. And uh, you know, on my rubric, it had to say that it was submitted as a link, and that was worth like 10 or 15 points, I think. Um, so I think it's a great idea for uh, just, uh, you know, anything process-oriented to be on the rubric as well. Okay, great. Uh, we have a question from Patricia. Could you show one that does not have percentages, just a criteria graph? Just a criteria graph. Okay, so let, let me jump out of my slideshow here and I will, um, I'm going to jump into Blackboard for a second just because I promised you I would. And um, let's see, here's my, my Blackboard environment. Uh, I have way too many identities. Whoops. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, and I have way too many courses too here. So, uh, you know, just my course for observa observation French. Um, so I'm just gonna go into rubrics. This one does not have any rubrics, but when I go to create a rubric, so here's a few things. Um, just gonna give it a title so we know what it is. All right, so I uh, can certainly put in a description of the rubric right here so students see it beforehand. But uh, just as I showed you on that, that screenshot there, uh, these are sort of the, um, sorry, the uh, default criteria that they, that they put in, uh, but here, Yikes. Here I can, uh, I have some choices here in terms of uh, no points, 
points, point range, percent, or percent range. So I ne I've never used that. Have you? No, I, that's new to me. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if anyone in the chat has uh, has uh, experience with this, uh, that would be great. That, but, yeah, really? point range. Look at that. Ooh, that's so the number of levels of achievement that you would need to use. Yeah, and I think, you know, if, so, if you, so let's say as you're grading, if someone shows competence, let's say in that middle, that middle uh, row there, you can actually probably make an adjustment if, if, if competence is measured from, let's say, uh, 60 points to 80 points. Uh, I guess that gives you some uh, room for adjustment inside of that particular uh, uh, achievement level. That's so, a nice feature. It is kind of a nice feature. Uh, you know, overall, uh, the most of the most of the feedback I've gotten with uh, using rubrics is uh, to keep them simple. Um, you know, like a lot of different uh, features uh, of uh, online learning management systems, um, you know, we try something out. Some things work, some things, uh, almost everything seems to need to be tweaked now and then. And so, um, you know, the, I, I'd encourage you guys to try this out and see if it works for you. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, show criteria weight if I choose not to. Oh, I see. Okay. So you don't have to show the criteria weight. Uh, everything has to be, has to, in Blackboard, everything has to add up to 100% uh, if I go with percentages. If I go with points, there is no uh, requirement for how many points it needs to add up to. Um, and all of these are, are editable and stuff. Uh, is, is there anything that wants to, anybody wants to, while I'm in Blackboard, if, if there's anything in particular you want to see me do uh, with this sort of blank rubric, I'd be happy to do it. Patricia posted a question in the Q&A uh, that she has two parts to the discussion boards. <clears throat> First, the initial response and reaction response. Right, right. She's asking if she needs two separate rubrics or how do I combine? Can you show her how do you add a rubric or a criteria there? So right. she combine it in one. So for the initial response, I would have uh, uh, something and, uh, you know, so, so perhaps, um, And then, uh, so if I want to add a row, that that's one thing I dislike about the rubrics in Blackboard is they they use rows and columns for a technical speak. If I would like it if they said add criteria because criteria is really the rows. So um, so if I <clears throat> if I change if I uh, Um, sorry. Responses to classmates. So um, I just I just added a piece of criteria: responses to classmates, and I think you hid the. Uh... Oh, you have it on points. Yeah. <laughs> so it changed your. Yeah, I like percentage better. Me too. <laughs> 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 we like to stick to our old tricks. I know, right? <laughs> I'm going out of my out of my comfort zone here. So uh, if I want to move the criteria, I'm trying to figure out how. Oh, edit mode is off. Look at that. I'm still creating a rubric here. So if I want to move this. Uh, Oh, oh, wow. It knocked me out. It's okay. We're running out of time. Anyway. It's okay. So what, so to answer that question directly, yes, I would have initial response here. I would, I would edit this, make this initial response. I would, uh, I would change these levels of achievement. Number one, this is how you do that. And 
it's it's just a little you know it's easy to do so uh, i go from proficient to novice and i would change this to initial response and in here the best one i would say uh, appropriate length addresses the uh initial prompt directly etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, over here where they have organization i would make this response to classmates and as usual with discussions we look at quantity and quality so i would have a statement about quantity and quality uh in this in each of these cells and that's how I would create a rubric for discussion so Rob we have a couple more questions in the Q&A but we're running out of time would you mind going in when you're all done and answering some of those uh, yeah absolutely great all right so um, are you all set I, I just want to extend my thanks again for uh, talking to us about rubrics today um, and it sounds like people are in need of, there's been a couple of requests for more rubric training, more technical training than, uh, than what you talked to us kind of about the principle of rubrics. But um, thank you for sharing your expertise, Rob. And, uh, sure. and you'll be back later today, right? I will. I'm doing the Oscar rubric, which is about course quality. So it's a rubric for uh, looking at your whole online course. Okay, great. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. We'll see you this afternoon. And All we'll right.